we thought we would annoy everyone with a list of the top 10 duos in the NBA, which is going to make everybody really mad, which is one of my favorite things to do, um, particularly the internet. <laughs> so let's start. Uh, and these, this is not a hard list. Okay. And also let me put another caveat on this as well. This is assuming everyone is healthy, which is not going to happen. But if everyone is healthy, this is the top 10 du- duos in the NBA. Let's start with John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. Morant was the best clutch scorer in the NBA last season, led the fourth quarter scorer in the playoffs, was named the most improved player, first player to ever win rookie of the year, and most improved player. Uh, do we have NBA music for this? That would be fun. Um, set career highs in scoring. They're both just 22 years old. I love John Morant. I think he's the future of the league alongside Luka. And he's so fun to watch. And I can't wait to see how his career continues to develop. I think he has a lot of success in his future. So I have John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. at 10. Joel Embiid, my MVP this year, and James Harden are number nine. The fourth highest scoring due in the NBA last season, 51.6 combined. Obviously, Harden did not do so well in the playoffs, lowage playoffs, scoring average since 2012, which is why I have them at nine. Why is he at nine? Joel Embiid's MVP. Well, you know, you got to consider the duo. It's a duo. It's not the best player. It's a duo. So James Harden puts them there. But I love Joel Embiid. I was very disappointed for him last season, not winning the MVP, which I think was very well deserved. But I have Joel Embiid and James Harden at nine. At eight, you know, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm all in right now. It's Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, the highest scoring duo in the 2021 playoffs. That's the last time Kawhi was healthy. Remember, again, this list is if everyone's healthy. If everyone's healthy, this is the list. Obviously, elite scorers and wing defenders, great two-way players, which is perfect for today's NBA. And if you watch the postseason this year, defenders were crucial. And obviously, you have to be able to put it in the basket as well. And, you know, the, the injury thing is obviously the question with the Clippers, but this is not what that list is for. This is for if everyone is healthy. So I have Kawhi, jo- Kawhi Leonard and Paul George at eight. At seven, Luka Doncic and Spencer Didwindy. Now, Luka is, he's hes at the door of the Superstar Club. He's not inside yet. He's still trying to get them to buy his fake ID. He's not hes not quite in there yet, right? He came in pre-games, you know, he's ready to go into the club, but he is not inside yet. This, these are all jokes for people who go to the club. <laughs> if you, if you don't you have no idea what we're talking about. Luka was the second leading scorer in NBA history, playoff history. Behind only Michael Jordan, that's pretty significant. He was the leading scorer in the playoffs, tied with Giannis at 31.7 points per game. And the Mavs had the best record in the NBA after trading for Spencer Dinwiddie, 19-6 and six after he joined the team. They are a great duo. I do have a lot of questions about the defensive ends with this team. Hopefully they are able to improve on that. I don't think there's ever going to be a version of Luka where he's a great defender, but I don't think you try to make a guy like Luka a great defender, just put great defenders around him. But Luka and Spencer are at seven. At six, got to put playoff Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, they obviously led the Heat to conference finals in two of the last three seasons. So before you start hating... Let me remind you of that. They were in the finals just a few years ago with the uh, Lakers. Got to remind you of that. They were one three-point shot from Jimmy Butler away from going back to the finals this year. Adebayo is an elite defender, needs to work on his scoring, but he has increased his points per game every season. And we obviously know what Jimmy Butler is. He needs no introduction. Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo at six. At five, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Fifth highest scoring due in the NBA in the last five seasons, 50.5 combined points per game. Obviously, they beat the Nets and KD. Bucks swept swept the Nets <laughs> and Kevin Durant. Beat the Bucks and Giannis. They didn't have Chris Middleton, but that doesn't matter. And the Heat and Jimmy Butler to reach the finals where they lost in six, but they're both great. Jalen Brown had an unbelievable postseason. Jason Tatum obviously is a star and had big moments, struggled with some turnovers, but they are an incredible duo, and I think they will be back and be formidable again this season. Here we are, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving at four. Highest scoring duo in the NBA last season. They only played 17 regular season games together last season, of course, because Kyrie Irving decided he didn't want to play basketball. But 
this is a hu- this is a huge deal. It's a big, big deal that Kyrie is back with the Nets. They're going to run it back one more time, I believe. I don't think this is going to turn into a multi-year situation with Kyrie. I think a lot would have to change. But for this particular year, if Kyrie does decide to play, and we know what KD brings, he's the best player on the floor on any given night in the NBA still. So Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, the fourth best duo in the NBA right now. Again, healthy, healthy, healthy and available. That's what this list is. At three, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Again, you're like, what are you talking about? Anthony Davis plays in 40 games a season. Well, LeBron almost won the scoring title last year, and this list is about healthy players. They are the second highest scoring duo in the NBA last season, 53.5 points per game. LeBron averaged 30 points per game at age 37. He was the leading scorer in the NBA last year, including including the playoffs. Um no, that's not last season, including the playoffs. He's missed more games than he's played over the last two seasons since winning the title. Obviously, a healthy AD and a healthy LeBron are championship level. They're going to win a championship if they're healthy. So that's why I have them at three. I do think LeBron is probably going to miss more time this season. It is very late in his career. He has to manage his body properly. I know he's going to come in in the best shape humanly possible because that's what LeBron James does. Anthony Davis, well, that'll be a question. But if he is healthy and he can make it through the season and he can be healthy going into the postseason, they will be a problem. Giannis and Chris Middleton. Obviously, Chris unfortunately got injured in the playoffs. But they were the sixth highest scoring duo in the NBA last season. They won a championship last year. They've proven themselves. Giannis is with these four guys, LeBron, KD. I won't reveal my one, but I think you know who it is. (laughs) Steph Curry. These are the four superstars in the league right now, and their duos are rightfully so at the top of this list. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson need no introduction, won their fourth title in eight seasons. Best three-point shooting duo in NBA history, the Splash Brothers, and uh, I really enjoyed watching this finals and seeing the success of of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson once again. I I like well-run situations, well-run organizations, rewarding consistency, you know, treating people well, sticking with your guys, developing young players, being smart in the draft, shrewd free agency moves. I like big swings too, but smart big swings, not just, you know, swinging in the dark because you're wearing those, you know, metaverse goggles. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.